Hi guys, Mr. Awful Waffles here. I'm still in LA right now, so this is my hotel room, still. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> Thank you to EA for taking me out here. And I wanted to talk today about Noah Jay's recent interview with Jason Blundell, because uh, there's one particular thing in there, amongst others that I'll talk about in other videos, but there's one thing in there that I have to talk about today, because it's so juicy. And a bunch of other people interviewed Jason when Chronicles came out, and... Uh, None of them touched on this topic. I don't really know why, but for some reason, Noah has been able to secure the keys today, or in the last few days, and get us access to some info that's just really intriguing, okay? So bear with me. Let's jump into this, right? In the interview, Jason pretty much confirms that the Cronorium, this book that we have heard about ever since that bio came out, around, I believe, the time of Der Eisen, I think that's when it was, stating that Richterfen had been armed with knowledge gained from the Cronorium. At that point, we didn't even know it was a book. Like, that was early days. That Cronorium differs depending on who the reader is, which is such a cool idea, right? The fact that you've got this book, this amazing cornucopia of knowledge, and... Uh, Nero seems to have read it, potentially. Richterfen has definitely read a bunch of it. In fact, he says he couldn't put it down. No surprise. And that's very Lovecraftian, by the way. But just the fact that, depending on the observer, this thing contains different mysteries, different secrets, different facts, different truths, different knowledge about the multiverse, different histories... It's so, so exciting to me, okay? Let's go a bit deeper right now, because uh, there's a specific idea that I had when I was watching that damn interview that I've just been buzzing about, okay? And whether or not it's something that's going to happen, it doesn't matter, okay? Just the thought excites me. I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about the dark goddamn thing. So, one of the pages in the Cronorium is the timeline. It's fairly late on in the grand scheme of things, and it's been signed by Richterfen. So Richterfen has read the timeline, as we have seen, obviously, and he has, as such, seen how different events play out over the years and in the different worlds, and has been able to use that to his advantage to secure the summoning key and things along those lines, right? And to build his laboratory under Alcatraz, and to give himself the blood, and all sorts of business, right? The thing that is really exciting to me is that the timeline is something that has always been, and I say always, it's not been out that long, but ever since it did come out, it's always been odd in my mind that it's very much written from Monty's perspective. It's like this guy has authored it himself. It's kind of been corrected and fit to his lens. And that's something that Jason has done with Jimmy Zielinski's story. He's taken the past and reshaped it to fit his new narrative and given us these corrective lenses that Jason has been so adamant on kind of bringing through the entire story of Black Ops 3 and really given new purpose to some events from the past, right? And similarly, the timeline is like that from Monty's point of view. Indeed, Monty is pretty much the Jason Blundell of the Zombies universe, okay? So Monty has kind of dictated the way the timeline is written out. And as such, there are things that are missing from it. This is something that I was actually planning to do a video on before Noah's interview even came out. I had talked to Lex about it, in fact. Just the fact that that timeline appears to Richterfen when he reads it. We're presuming, at least, that that's the same way that we see it when we receive it, because we're seeing a version of the timeline that we're assuming Richterfen saw as well, if that follows and sort of makes sense to you guys. Assuming that Richterfen's timeline is the one that we see when we read the timeline, I feel like there could be an alternative version of those events, an alternative version of time itself in the zombies story if another reader was going to basically observe those pages. Why should you care? Well, in Black Ops 1, we basically started off with like one world, one universe, one coherent story. Coherent, okay? Yeah, one coherent story. And then in Black Ops 2, things got a bit funny. We had Mob of the Dead introduced, for example, that was like, is that like a bubble or purgatory? 
what's going on, right? And then Origins came out, and things got really weird, because in Origins, you've suddenly got a new timeline of younger characters shifted from their original timeline in World War One, Northern France, meeting up, convening in a way that they should just never have met in the first place, and then completing an easter egg to free Samantha, who's been reaching out from another dimension, who is in the house. There's just this really interesting narrative that explodes out of nowhere, and the multiverse really gets set in stone as part of the story. And so we went, went from one to many, and then in Black Ops 3, we went from many to even more, okay? So you imagine the hierarchy of the way they've expanded this story. You've got the base, you then have the multiverse, and you then have the sort of Black Ops 3 omniverse almost. And the thing that really excites me is that by just acknowledging the possibility of there being another layer to that stack of storyline pancakes, you blow the doors off the situation of, oh, well, the timeline just kind of tells us everything that could possibly have happened, and that just shuts down a lot of the mysteries from the past. Oh, that kind of stops us from needing to speculate about this, that, and the other. Oh, that's kind of the closing of a door as opposed to the opening of new possibilities. Like, just the thought of there being a Shadow Man interpretation of the timeline. You've got Monty's point of view on one hand, how things have progressed in the world we know, within our comprehension, and then just what if there is a an omniverse, essentially, where the Shadow Man gets his way, and the Shadow Man is the one in control the entire time. You don't have the Apothecons banished to the Dark Aether. Rather, the Keepers end up down there, the Apothecons reign free, and it's an inverted struggle. Like the yin-yang flips, the tables are turned. This is not just another omniverse, but it's the yang to the zombies yin that we've had so far. It's just like, I think that that's a really cool idea, basically. I've rambled a lot in this video, and I've just realized that, and so I'm going to interrupt myself now and just sort of take a breather for a moment, but... I just think it's a cool concept that we could have been stacking these pancakes all these years, and we think that with this timeline, we've come to the end of it, but that stack of pancakes is actually just one of the dimensions. And there's a whole nother axis with the Shadow Man in control. There's a whole nother axis where he gets his way. Maybe there's a whole third, fourth, infinite more axes where other things play out, other things happen. Richterfen doesn't manage to preserve their eternal souls in the house. Richterfen doesn't manage to kill himself in the giant, or whatever, whatever turning point you want to go to in the story. Samantha doesn't get taken by Monty in the house and returned, or she gets taken and never returned, or she's never corrupted in the first place and things stay fine. Like, there's so many possibilities there. And this is all coming from, like, two damn sentences from Jason Blundell in Noah Jay's interview. Like, when Noah Jay said that there were bombshells in that interview, I was thinking, okay, like, there are going to be some interesting things maybe about gameplay, things like that. Little did I goddamn know that my boy was going to give me a whole new breadth of storyline to consider. And yes, this is uh, sort of wishful thinking, I suppose. You could argue that this is the sort of thing that is a, a nice kind of uh, back-of-the-envelope kind of calculation of, well, you know, what if this was the way things were? But I just feel like it's so rich an idea that it's definitely worth a video, but it's potentially worth further consideration in the future as well. Like, this timeline is great and all, and I love it to pieces, and I love the fact that it's given us new information about all sorts of things, and it's filled in gaps from the past, but it's only filled in gaps in one of the axes. Maybe there's more to it. I'm so excited, and I goddamn love this story. <laughs> Holy moly, dude! Ah, oh, goddamn it, zombies! It just never fails to stop blowing my goddamn mind, and I don't know, man, like... Where do they go from here? Do they start jumping between the axes, between the omniverses? Like, whoo! Dimension 63-2, Dimension 63-3, like, <laughs> bruh. Oh my goodness, man.
It might be a pipe dream, but it's one that I'm fully willing to entertain. <laughs> so, Noah, good job with that story question, my guy. I've been Mr. Awful Waffles. Leave a like if you've enjoyed me kind of rambling today about a future we may never see, but one that just excites the hell out of me. I've been Mr. Awful Waffles, and I will see you guys, hopefully, in another Zombies video very soon, because we're about to hit 1 million subs, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> so thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.